A global news investigation into the Nova Scotia shooting back in April has found the gunmen spent tens of thousands of dollars creating a fake RCMP cruiser. The investigation is part of a new podcast called 13 Hours Inside the Nova Scotia Massacre. Now, court documents show Gabriel Wartman bought his first former RCMP vehicle at a surplus auction in March 2019. This more than a year before the shooting spree. Over the next nine months, he spent more than $33,000 on former police cars and car parts. Some of those parts were flagged by PayPal as being for police use only. In the end, the vehicle he drove during the rampage was, according to the RCMP, quote, identical in every way to one of their own. One criminologist says that shows it is far too easy for someone to impersonate police. There should be absolutely no way that those types of items can be purchased by an individual, you know, through eBay or through any of these online vendors. I mean, it's just not in keeping with common sense. And you're not going to be a collector if you're doing that. Sarah Ritchie is the host of 13 Hours, and she joins us now with more. Sarah, we appreciate you taking the time. It is such a disturbing story on so many levels, mm -hmm. an important podcast that you bring to light. Um, what does this tell you about the level of planning that went into the shooting spree? Yeah, well, that's been one of the big questions for us as we've been investigating in this podcast and creating this podcast is just how much planning went into what happened that weekend. It's important to note that the RCMP have said that they do not believe that what happened on April 18th and 19th was pre-planned. But I've spoken with a former FBI profiler, an expert in these kinds of mass killings, who who said the definition of pre-planning really needs to be uh, carefully defined. You know, this kind of thing could be planned over years or weeks or months, but it could also be planned over the course of days and hours. And what we can see when we lay it all together is that Gabriel Wartman had all the tools at his fingertips that weekend to be able to carry out such a massacre. He had genuine police uniforms. He had weapons and ammunition, and he had that police vehicle that he had spent, as you've just talked about, many months making it look just like an RCMP vehicle. And so the bottom line here is we don't know for sure what the gunman was planning, and we don't know for sure how much planning went into what he was doing on that weekend. That's for investigators to determine through the course of their investigation. But our investigation shows that he had all of those tools available and there are some people who are calling for change to to make that more difficult what is not in dispute is these items these tools as you mentioned they are easily accessible and mm -hmm. by and large when you talk about people using them for just to have as a collection is one thing but they can and obviously have been used for nefarious reasons the question is has anything changed to make police impersonation at least a little more difficult no, it hasn't in Canada, and nothing has changed to make police impersonation more difficult since the shooting spree that happened here in Nova Scotia in April. So what we know is that it is illegal to impersonate a police officer in this country, but collecting police uniforms, buying, selling, and trading police paraphernalia, all of that is perfectly legal. It's very easy to do. We found out in our investigation it happens online in Facebook groups, on eBay and Kijiji. The gunman was purchasing items on eBay and through Kijiji as well. And so we know that it is relatively easy to do. Um, and we have heard from one former collector who said that he actually tried to flag to the RCMP commissioner herself more than a year before the shootings the potential for danger uh, with people trading genuine RCMP uniforms. Sarah, we appreciate your time. An important story, an important podcast. Sarah Ritchie joining us in Halifax. Now, just a reminder of the podcast, 13 Hours Inside the Nova Scotia Massacre is out now. You can listen for free anywhere you get your podcast. Head to globalnews.ca slash 13 hours for more.